I cast upon him all my care Now I know the answer's here, it's mine I believe that I receive it's mine According to the word of God, it's mine I know the Lord has heard my prayer I cast upon him all my care I know the Lord has heard my prayer, I cast upon Him all my care, now I know the answer's here, it's mine. By His stripes I am here, by His stripes I am healed, He took away my sickness, and now in Jesus I am free. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was on him. away my sickness and my iniquities and now in Jesus I am free oh it's mine it's mine it's mine oh it's mine I know the Lord has heard my prayer I cast upon him all my care, now I know the answer's here, it's mine. Yes, I know the Lord has heard my prayer, I cast upon him all my care, now I know the answer's here, it's mine. healing is ours praise you Jesus healing is ours and we take it by faith and this song it said I believe I receive healing I believe I receive healing by faith we take a hold of it you know mm. some of us may be going through a sickness condition in our bodies and we don't have to just you know you know only speak this negative situation that we feel mm. all the time but we can you know have the promise of healing Jesus made a way for us to be healed. That's right. And that's what we want to talk to you about today is that healing is God's will. Mm. And you can be assured of that, you know, no matter what situation it might be, sickness or something that is really terminal, yeah. you can know today that healing is God's will for your life. Amen. You Jesus know, paid yeah. a price, a yeah. heavy price, exactly. to purchase our healing for us. Mm. And I mean, it was a horrible death that Jesus was. died on the cross. And one of the benefits was healing. The other benefits were salvation and all that. Yeah. But healing is rightfully ours. When we believe, we receive it. That's right. And you know, like the song says, I believe, I receive, it's mine. Mm -hmm. That's the first step in knowing that healing belongs to you. Amen. Is knowing that it rightfully is yours because mm -hmm. that's what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. And first, let's establish that fact that healing is God's will. For everybody. For everybody. Yeah. It's not just for, you know, the goodies or the, you know, the people who special do right. People. Yeah, special yeah. people. It's for everybody. Yeah. And let's kind of establish that from the scriptures, knowing that healing is the will of God. Let's see that in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 40. Now, you know, as we sang this song, 
the last line of the first song says, I know the Lord has heard my prayer and I cast upon him all my care. Now I know the answer is mine. Amen. And first establishing that healing belongs to you, it, it makes it easy actually to receive from God yeah. when, you, when you know that healing belongs to you. And let's take that example from Mark 1 and we'll see verse 40. And it says, and there came a leper to him. This leper came to Jesus and beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be clean. And verse 42 says, And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Mm -hmm. Now there are two important um, points I like to mention. First of all, the leper came to Jesus saying, if you will, Lord, if it's your will, I can be clean. You and know. here in this yeah. case, it's a leper. It's a leper. And this was a very, you know, the situation wasn't a comfortable one. Mm. And you know, some of the meanings when you see under leprosy, it says this man was covered with leprosy. Mm. In the book of Luke, the same story is elaborated and Dr. Luke, he says, this man's, this man was full of leprosy. In other words, his skin was peeling and his body parts were wasting. Yeah. This was an awful disease. You know, lepers were actually kind of the outcasts of society yeah. because people didn't want to be around them because of the disease that was so contagious. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's why he comes to Jesus, you know, yeah. if you will, because he's not sure. Yeah. He's probably an outcast all this time and he the thinks... The condition yeah. that he's under is like a living death. Mm. It's you like know. hell on earth. Yeah, he's separated from his family, separated yeah. from his friends. Never knows, you know, when I will be back, you know, to society. That was the condition this man was in. Mm. It was just a, a horrible disease. Abandoned. Right. And, you know, he must have heard about Jesus healing people and... Maybe that's why he said, you know, if you will, you can make me clean. He must have heard Jesus healing other kinds of diseases, yeah. but not leprosy. Mm. So he comes and says, Lord, if you will, if you just can heal me. Yeah. And you know, I like what Jesus says. He doesn't first say, okay, be clean. Yeah. He says, I will. And That's the first thing. His yeah. reaction is mentioned in verse mm. 41. Yeah. It says, Jesus moved with compassion. Mm. When Jesus sees sick people, he doesn't just, you know, ignore them. He moves with compassion mm. because those are also people. Right. You know, as much as, you know, it, because they're sick doesn't make them any different. Mm. They're also people. And Jesus moved with compassion when he saw this man and he put forth his hand and touched him. And then he said, I will. It is my will, be clean. Mm. And imagine the reaction this man must have felt. I mean, first of all, Jesus says, healing is my will for you. Yeah. And then he says, be clean. I mean, just imagine this man has been unclean all this time, an outcast of society. And now being clean, he can have a family, he can have a job. Mm. And that would have been such a relief Hopeful to him. Hopeful situation. Hopeful. Gave him lots of hope. Exactly, and that's what Jesus does. He brings hope to people's lives. You know, he doesn't say, okay, he didn't, you know, he didn't say to the man, you know, what kind of background have you come from? Maybe yeah. because you were born to this family, you're going through leprosy. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say that. No. You know, Jesus said, as simple as can be, yeah. I will. And Jesus is looking at each one of you who I've been watching right now. Yeah. And he's saying, it is my will to heal you no matter what condition your sickness may be no matter mm. what disease is upon your body and whatever attacks of sickness have come you know whether it be a simple fever or a itch or something right. or it may be a terminal disease and you've been given a few months to live Jesus is looking right at you and saying it is my will to heal you completely it is my will. yeah that is really exciting to know that healing is God's will yeah and you know what I and like? We can also yeah. know it is God's will when we see in the New Testament in Hebrews 13, it says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, mm -hmm. and forever. So that means the miracle that Jesus did just here in the book of Mark to this leper, he can still do it today and he will still do it forever. It means healing has not changed. No. It was not only 2,000 years ago for those people. Healing is still there. 
Because yeah. Jesus is the same. And you know, you can see that healing is God's will. Because, you know, let me take you to some scriptures and show you what was Jesus doing when he was on this earth. He was actually establishing and showing people that healing was his will. Look at Matthew. Let's first go to Mark. On, we're on Mark. So we'll just go through the scriptures before that. We're in Mark 1. And we'll just go up to verse 34. It says, And Jesus healed many that were sick of different kinds of diseases. He cast out many devils, and he suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. So it says, he was healing people of all kinds of diseases. I mean, it doesn't mention, but it just says you know, different kinds. It didn't give an exact one. Mm. That means there's nothing or no sickness that is too big for God to heal. Yeah. Amen. He healed all kinds of diseases. And look at what uh, Matthew 8.16 says. Let's just go there for a minute. And nowhere did Jesus ever say, it is not my will to heal you or mm. I can't. Right. Or because of this, because mm. of that, I can't heal you. It's always a yes. You know, when Jesus saw a sick person, he reached forth his hand and he healed them. Yeah. Matthew 8.16 says, When the evening time was come, they brought unto him <coughs> many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Notice, he healed all that were sick. Mm. Not just a few, but all. Yeah. And another thing I want to notice is, um, for you to notice is that, you know, the way he spoke to demons, he didn't take them as light. He cast them out. He spoke with authority and he said, demons, I resist you. Come out of those people or whoever yeah. he was, you know, speaking to. And then he started healing sick people. And from these verses, we can establish and see Jesus was going around healing people. Mm. That shows that's his will to heal. Yeah. I mean, that itself is amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. God is no respecter of persons. Exactly. No matter what age you are, and no matter what background you come from, it is God's will to heal you. Mm. So we need to establish that first, that it is God's will to heal me. Right. And then know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And also that he is no respecter of persons. Right. Once we establish these, then our prayers also will be right. Mm. We can pray right. Yeah, Jesus is no respecter of persons. I mean, here the leper is, you know, probably a nobody in yeah. the sight of men. And in another place, you know, Jesus goes to this rich man's house and brings salvation. That was, uh, I believe, Zacchaeus. Yeah. Yeah, Zacchaeus. He goes to Zacchaeus' house and brings salvation, a rich man. And then he's healing, you know, people in between. So, you know, according to society, people who are nobodies and, you know, the people who are somebody's. Yeah, somebody's. He was healing all kinds of people. Amen. So, one thing is, first of all, knowing that healing is God's will and that God is no respecter of persons. <coughs> he is able to heal anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, let's take a look at another scripture. I want to just also establish the fact that, you know, when you, when you receive healing, you also get your life back together. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to do things when you're sick all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're always sick and you're always in a place of weakness, it's pretty hard, you know, to do things. Yeah. But when Jesus brings healing, he also brings our lives back together. And mm -hmm. today you might feel like your life is fallen apart and um, you're facing, you know, kind of headaches and physical and mental torment. Well, we're here to tell you, according to the Word of God, you can believe that healing is yours. Amen. You can be set free from all those tormenting spirits. That's right. I mean, God doesn't want you going around living in torment. I mean, He didn't come to this world and say, okay, you know, I'm just, just going to live my life and, and do nothing. He came here and did some amazing things. He brought us healing. He brought our lives back together. And I believe for this leper, you know, his mm. life came back together yeah. by being clean and healed. You know, he was able to get a family, get yeah. a job. Yeah. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to bring you healing and he also wants to bring your life back together. Mm -hmm. You can see that in Luke 9.56. It says that, you know, he gives us the reason for why he came to the earth. He says, the son of man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And one of the words saved there is, healing. He has come to give you life and bring healing. 
John 10.10 10 says that the thief is the enemy who comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life in abundance. Mm. So then it goes to kind of this position, okay, Jesus is the author of healing. Who brings sickness? Yeah. The devil, the devil. right? It mentions that in John 10.10, 10, the thief, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And all throughout the ministry of Jesus, he kept exposing mm. demon spirits right. and that they were the ones who tormenting people mm. and that it was not God. Right. Because, you know, sometimes we get the idea that, you know, God is the one who's putting the sickness on me mm. to teach me a lesson right. or maybe, you know, because it brings God glory because mm. maybe this sickness will help me understand somebody else's condition. But that's not true. It's not true. Because sickness and disease is evil yeah. and every bad thing, every evil thing comes from the devil. It does not come from God. And that's the lie that has kept, you know, many of you out there tormented is you believe you believe this lie that the God is the one who brings sickness. But yeah. according to the word of God, as we see, Jesus was casting devils out. Mm. He was healing sick people. And that was his will for mankind to bring yeah. healing. We, we see yeah. God's desire in 3 John 2. We can read the scripture yeah. and see the book of 3 John verse 2. There's only one chapter there and it says, Beloved. And God is talking to you. Whoever is in the family of God, God is talking to you, beloved. I wish or I desire and I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Wow, that's amazing. God's desire is for us to be in health. Above all things, Above all things. Above everything that you could imagine, he God wants, wants to you to be healthy and prosper. Amen. Wow. And he says, even as your soul prospers, mm. and the soul is referring to your mind. And he says, you know, if your mind begins to prosper, or if your mind, if you keep changing the way you think, then you will be able to prosper in your, you know, financial realm mm -hmm. and even in your physical realm. Right. And, you know, some of you may be asking, how can I get rid of this lie that I've been believing all this time? Well, there's a scripture, you know, in Second Corinthians 10. It tells us, to cast down imaginations, or in other words, bring down thoughts that are against the knowledge of God. Mm, we should see Yeah, we should too. actually look at that scripture. Because it's kind of interesting. Once you establish it's God's will, you can put aside the lies of the enemy and say, I've been believing a lie. I don't have to be sick any longer. God's will is for me to be healed. Mm. Yeah, let's, let's look and at that And God's scripture. will is His word. Yeah. So we have to go to scripture to find out what God's will is. Yeah. Because without the Bible, we don't know what God's will is. Yeah, let's look at that scripture in 2 Corinthians 10. This is what we should do to wrong thoughts. Because, you know, we can't stop wrong thoughts from coming in our minds. In the sense, it will, we will have different thoughts coming in but we can do something about it staying in our minds and yeah. you know causing a stronghold because the word of god gives us influencing the us yeah from influencing we don't have to live bound to those wrong thoughts any longer mm -hmm. see what second corinthians 10:5 says it says casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ so when wrong thoughts come into your mind, you pull it down. You say, in Jesus' name, I cast it down. I bring those imaginations mm. down. And imaginations yeah. also refers to the way you see yourself. Right. You know, some, sometimes we can't get rid of, you know, seeing ourselves healed. Mm. You know, we can constantly only see, see ourselves sick all the time. Mm. You know, having, being in debt all the time. Yeah and never being able to get free mm. of medical things and all that. But so those are imaginations. Mm. And once we start casting down those imaginations, it says that exalts itself against God's knowledge. Mm. And now we found out that it is God's will for us to be healed. It is. That's the knowledge of God. Yeah. So anything that's coming up against the knowledge of God, you know, we need to cast it down. Right. We need to pull it down. Those wrong pictures mm. in our minds. You've got to, you've got to be so um, angry against those thoughts and say, you're not going to stay in my mind mm. and keep me bound any longer. Yeah. I have the ability to do that. Yeah. And by speaking forth God's word, you can pull those thoughts down. Mm. So today, you may be facing a sickness in your body. Maybe, you know, it, it might not even be a sickness in your body. 
it could be in your mind some kind of a tormenting um, situation maybe depression or oppression mm. but today you can believe that God wants you healed of every sickness and every disease and so let's pray a prayer and I believe even as we pray right now that you're going to receive your healing in Jesus name Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I come before you. I believe, I believe that healing, that healing is your will, is your will. I pull down, I pull down every thought, every thought that has kept me bound, that has kept me bound all these years, all these years. And right now, and right now, I speak healing, I speak healing into my body, into my body. Your word is life, your word is life and health, and health to all my flesh to all my flesh thank you jesus thank you jesus healing is mine healing is mine in jesus name in jesus name amen amen